Welcome back, everyone. Round four here at Hartford, Connecticut, Pokemon Regional Trading Card Game Championship. Kirk Dupe Snacks Dubé alongside Jeffrey Saran Wrap Saran. Before we dive into who we've got for round four, let's lay in a quick shout out to FullGripGames.com, Northern Ohio business, if I'm not mistaken. Um, running a lot of great deals on Unbroken Bonds and Pokemon Singles right now. So to get 10% off Pokemon Singles, use the promo code LGN10. Again, that is on Pokemon Singles. FullGripGames.com and uh, those really cool uh, Andrew Mahone affiliate with FullGripGames.com uh, running us through gives a couple deck techs to play in between rounds so you'll be seeing a couple more of those as well. Jeff, I just saw the list slide in. Who we got this round? All right, we're going to look over here. We got Mike Fouché and Bob Zhang. This ought to be a really interesting one. Bob Zhang uh, definitely one that uh, – Make sure the head headsets are on first before we actually go forward with that. I just kind of thought about that. Yeah, we're going to get a quick confirmation on headsets. Uh, and uh, our headset confirmation person taking the longest route possible. Um, and I just saw somebody lean into the screen and they don't have them on. Uh, Mikey Boucher, Team X-Files, kind of an old guard in the game. Um, great guy, math teacher from, mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, from the Northeast. Also so, a writer for six prizes. Writer for six prizes. Uh, not surprising to see him here. Uh, genuine nice guy, Mikey Fouché. Like Mikey Fouché, uh, Bob Zhang, uh, also a, you know, no, a very familiar name. I uh, believe he got runner-up at, which regional was it last year? It was a runner-up regional. He was playing Trevenant. He got runner-up at it. Uh, he played Zorak in the finals. Zorak, Trevenant, tough matchup there. So, yeah, sometimes it goes that way. However, you got to navigate that field a little bit. Uh, they are rolling. Right now, to see who goes first, you're going to get a confirmation well, if they have their headphones on. Well, we're going to uh, do so we talk about the field a little bit here uh, while we're waiting for that kind of uh, them to figure, uh, get the headphones on right now. Um, but they do a stroll through a lot of different tables uh, during the last round while you guys were commentating, and uh, lots of peek around still in the field. Uh, Trevenant is definitely out and about. There's quite a few at the top tables there. Um, but the biggest deck by far is uh, Zork Garbodor. Um, Lots of different variations of it, from more of like the Miller, uh, middle side of it to the straight side that we saw around uh, two. Um, but definitely a lot of the Zorak Garb going yeah, around. Yeah, Zorak Garb making a resurgence, kind of making up for that Zorak muck type stuff we saw in the first round. So these players are ready. And without further ado, let's get down to the action. Mikey Fouché is going to be on the right-hand side of your screen. Bob Zhang on the left. Bob Zhang, as you mentioned, kind of on his old reliable Trevenant. And Mikey Fouché coming down the pike with what looks like Zorark. Galissapod GX. Galissapod coming back out of the out of the woodworks. Really, you know, we haven't seen that card in a while. I'm, I'm guessing because of the the high uh, the high counts of Zorak Toad from Daytona, the previous expanded regional here that we had that we had the uh, pleasure of watching earlier. Uh, Galissapod able to take out all these toads with the grass weakness there, and that could be the idea here of uh, what he's going with. I know Mikey has played this deck quite a bit and feels very comfortable with it, and I think that's part of it, too. Hasn't gone to too many events this year. Obviously an incredibly solid player. Take a little bit of a step back. Um, so, you know, go to something you know, uh, leverage your prior experiences, and try to cobble together a pretty good tournament. And so far, 3-0, it's working out for him. Let's jump down to the game. Uh, is that a watch and learn pseudo Wudo in the active? Mysterious Treasure pitching. I can't quite tell because of the reflection. Phantom coming wow. down. So this, this, this list is... Traditional Trevenant, which Trevenant traditionally loses to Zorark. And to counteract that, you throw in some rainbows and some pseudo wudos with the with that uh, watch and learn ability to ride as beating right them uh, right back at them. Um, definitely with, see a turnaround as a work matchup. Yeah, which with uh, to your point, they're using um, the rainbow energy and the weakness of Zorark GX to take that watch and learn knockout and make it a little bit easier. Um, uh, N comes down after a Phantup and another Pseudo Wudo. So Bob can't be too upset with uh, how he's got his game plan set up for this moving forward. The big thing here is going to have to get, uh, be getting that Pseudo Wudo act out of the active spot here. He does run two Floatstone, and he also has the one Guzma, which can come in handy to be able to uh, switch out the, the active Pokemon here. And that way he can start applying that um, Trevenant ability to lock out all items with the Forest Curse. Ultra Ball, uh, Gold Ultra Ball, pitching a Gold Rescue Stretcher and a Full Art Lysander, grabbing a Shaman EX, going to be able to uh, uh, set up. And uh, All right, sorry. So I just looked at Bob Zing's list one more time, and there's another piece of this list that just completely threw me off. He also runs a 1-1 Malamar line. 
So that's one way to super accelerate getting these Watcher Loons to do what it's ready. I was, I was thinking about him, like, you know, he has four Psychic, four Rainbow, no counter energy to really go in there and pivot that Watcher Learn right away. And instead, he opts to have the 1-1 one, one Malamar to help accelerate energy. Psychic energy is going to hit that watch and learn pseudo Wudo on the bench, uh, kind of to sit there looming uh, while Mikey goes through the paces for his turn. Ultra Ball pitching a choice band and a Garbodor, I believe is what that was. It uh, looks like it was uh, the Alolan Muck uh, okay. that's getting that's getting bid right now. We're probably going to see the traditional play of Zora, you know, Tapu Lele, Bridget, spread the Zoras and did Ditto's down. But that's if he has a draw supporter in his hand. I'm looking at that Bridget, he probably has a, a part two to his plan. Mikey, that Bridget can allow him to grab three basic Pokemon from his deck, put it directly onto his bench, and Zora, Zorua, Wimpod. Uh, not very, not not uncommon move when you're playing these Zorark Elisapod decks. Definitely want to get at least one Wimpod set up, and of course, the more Zoruas, the better, because that translates to more Zorark GXs. I think he was he was hesitant at first to get that that second Zerua down. Uh, he was eyeing down some other different cards there, and that's just strictly because that these Watcher uh, Learns Hudoodles are a threat to Zoroarks there, and not so much a Golisopod. Uh, so going down, opted out to go to the two Zeruas uh, and the Wimpod here. One thing to note, he did not bench a Ditto. Ditto typically one of the first targets you have. It's like the flex card here, so it, we're probably going to say that it's most likely prized. Interesting to note, Bob, only one Phantom on the board, and it is it is a Trevenant deck. Um, Skyfield bumping the Dimension Valley and just a pass from Mikey Fouché. Trevenant rolling off the top. Forest Curse is live if he can get that uh, Ghost Tree into the active. But Bob's got some other things to do. Judge reach in and say, tidy up your game space a little bit, bud. It's getting, uh, it's getting a little crowded down there. Get a little crowded here. We do see a second energy in hand and a D Valley. I wonder if he's opting and decided that, you know, is it worth, uh, you know, touch this energy here, playing a D Valley, um, and then trying to uh, get a supporter here, probably here with the Lele or with the Verse Seeker he already has in hand. Um, could probably get another Phantom here after he does an inventory check here and play a Verse Seeker to draw additional cards. If he is playing that 1-1 one, one NK Mal Malamar line, and I was just about to say, if, if both pieces are in there, I can see going into NK right now. Bob, my, Mikey kind of coming unglued in his seat. like, what's going on over there? But yep. uh, there's <laughs> hands on the forehead, <laughs> wiping the brow. <laughs> Writing's on the wall. Now if Bob gets uh, that Malamar built up, those pseudo-udos become infinitely more dangerous, and uh, it's uh, much more difficult for Mikey to kind of target them down before they can really do damage to his board. And I think I like that, to your point there, too, grabbing an NK there. One, when thing he does is does also discard a psychic energy to his discard pile to help up with the psychic recharge. Another thing I want to note is he did not play the D Valley, and the reason he hasn't played that yet because he can't attack with Trevenant just yet to take full advantage of that uh, Dimension Valley effect. He's going to need two energy to, to uh, use uh, Trevenant's attack there. So holding the D Valley, hoping he can hit, get to the break, and maybe get some additional Trevenant pieces. Did find another Phantom. That comes down. Uh, definitely a fan of that. I believe a counter catcher is a gold counter catcher in the front of his hand. Bench Barrier, Mr. Mime. Bob realizing, well, if Skyfield's in play, I'm going to use it too. Because when he bumps it off, the first thing that's going to yep. trigger is that Shaman, and that's the that's the thing he's going to want to get off his board. So, uh, good thinking by uh, by Bob. Yep, Bump it, there Shaman's it is, right gone, out and Bench Barry Mr. Mon slides right back into place uh, where those five Pokemon uh, should live. And Bob now going to play a Rescue Scarf down on Suda Wuda. Interesting enough that this Mr. Mime is pretty irrelevant in this matchup here. However, in that case there, like you said, it was a chance to opt and get that Shaman off the board. One less liability, going back to the single prizes and no double prizes on the board now. Ultra Ball pitching uh, Bunnelby, uh, kind of a, uh, a blast from the past, that Bunnelby, very popular last year in these Zorark decks, uh, kind of before resource management or Anguru came around and proved itself to be uh, just a little bit better. Um, but the ability to not only Rototiller, but also Burrow, return resources and discard off your uh, your opponent's deck uh, might be the reason it's being played over the resource management or Anguru. Skyfield bumping the D Valley. This stadium war was initiated by Bob, and playing those four copies of, or excuse me, three copies of Dimension Valley will make it hard to to uh, lower the cost of his attacks. I do see here that Bob's hand is not very good at all. I think that's what this is an Ultra Ball and an Enhanced Hammer right now. So if Fouché can get the knockout here, he's still going to be in a great spot because there's unless it's the top deck of a Rainbow Energy, um, there's going to be a lot of dead cards and a lot, not, a lot of uh, nothing going on on Bob's side. 
Mike Fouché, uh, I believe that was the Tapu Lele up top for the Colrus. Colrus is going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The math professor doing his counting just right, peeling off 10 cards, and I'd be remiss if there wasn't a Zorark GX to come out of there. There's definitely a Zorark GX there. However, I do not see a double colorless energy, but he does have two trades available, plus the Battle Compressor to thin some cards here. We could see some Propagate Eggs come down off of this here, and maybe some other dead cards like the Mr. Mime, like I was about to say there, and potentially uh, like the Alola Muck or anything like that. Looks like Mime, Egg, and Battle Compressor will fall victim to the other battle compressor, go to the dicta, uh, discard. Uh, Mikey Fouché, a very deliberate player, really going through the paces at a, at a, at a good clip here, and uh, making every move is very deliberate. He has his idea of what he wants mm -hmm. to do, and he's just getting it done. Battle Compressor typically is used to get out those like one of supporters into executing these decks right now. He already has a Propagate Egg in hand, so now at this point is, let me get rid of a dead card, get rid of my other egg, and then my last Battle Compressor. So this tells me there's not going to be much more thinning going on the rest of this game. Pitch an Egg, draw two, Chorus and N. Egg number two, Skyfield, and uh, was that another Alolan Muck? Look like, yeah, look like the Lucker Grimer there. He's going through his cards fairly quickly here, but third Zorg down now. Still no, still no DCE, unless that was it in the backside there. I couldn't tell. <laughs> Third trade still misses the DCE. However, uh, there are. it's not that bad because if Mikey's not attacking, those watch and learn pseudo Wudos mm -hmm. aren't either. Does play the Pokecom here and puts back the Lowland Grimer. We might see either the pseudo Wudo or the Golisopod come out here. Unless he really wants to reach and draw some more cards without DCE, he may go for a Shaman, but I think his hand, hand's pretty heavy to do that. Getting another Wimpod down, not bad. Um, taking a look at Mikey's deck, he does have an AZ, um, able to pick up uh, you know, damaged Pokemon, mm -hmm. which uh, might serve him well here on uh, the spread strategy that Trevenant tends to rely on. Yep. Now, Bob obviously has a little bit different setup here with those Watch and Learn Pseudo Wudo, but you can't imagine that he won't be, uh, won't be spreading uh, some, some damage around with the Trevenant, Trevenant Breaks with uh, Tree Slam. Benches the Wimpod and just passes over. It looks like he top decked a Mysterious Treasure, so he can get a Tapu Lele uh, if he opts to there. That's probably going to be his best choice here with look at how his hand is. He's holding in Hand Hammer. We're probably going to see a Tapu Lele for possibly a Colrus or just an end. Mysterious Treasure looking through. As long as that Tapu Lele is not tucked away in the prizes, Bob will have access to a supporter this turn. However, Malamar's pulled to the front. So maybe, just maybe. That Tapu Lele might be prized. And now a Trevenant Break has been pulled to the front. So that Tapu Lele seems to be prized because I'd be, uh, I'd be hard pressed to say that Bob wouldn't grab that and at least get a supporter going for this turn since his hand is now down to just one card. You know, I do like here that um, he opted to hold the Enhanced Hammer versus discarding the Enhanced Hammer over the Ultra Ball here. That way, if he does touch DC next turn, him being Mike, he can take away that double colors right away. But he's just trying to set himself up here. He has the Malamar in play. He's only going to need one energy attachment out on the Trevenant. Um, so he's kind of hopefully setting up stuff here so when he hits that top deck, he could really explode. Trade, trade. Uh, just a quick correction there, Jeff. The other card was uh, Counter Catcher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he ultra, but he mysterious treasure the, uh, the Counter Catcher. The Counter Catcher, you're right. Yep. Uh, a couple trades for Mikey. Filling up that hand, it's at about mm, a, a squabillion cards. Um, and he's going to have his options to go wherever he wants. Ultra Ball using the eggs and maybe a Galissapod here. Is it time? It there is. There it is. First impression. 30 plus 90. Comes in for 120, assuming it stepped into the active that turn. And I'm pretty sure it's hitting for weakness, too, so that's who Wudo's getting knocked down. Assuming there's uh, some grass energy in there. Mikey only playing two copies of grass energy. There um, it is, Guzma. Is he going to go after the Trevenant right now, or is he going to take the Sudo Wudo on bench? So, a lot of options here, right? Um, He's not opening himself up on any Zoroarks, which is obviously mm -hmm. a, a great thing. Um, however, there's a lot of good options. Get get a, get the pseudo Wudo that has been kind of set up already. Get that down for the count. Um, he could have maybe considered the Inke 
and say, mm -hmm. okay, at least you won't be able to power up them, yep. uh, the, the counter pseudo wudos very quickly. Uh, Mikey eyes up the, the kitted up pseudo wudo and says, this is where I want my knockout to be. And to the surprise of no one, Trevin and Brake steps into the active forest curse. No items for Mikey as long as it's hanging out there. That's the big thing you want to note there with the forest curse coming active here is as soon as Mikey played that Guzma, right away played a verse seeker to bring it back. Knowing that the only way he can get out of his item lock is moving that Trevin out of the active spot. Juniper off the top. For Bob Zhang, that's going to bring him seven cards. Uh, got rid of that enhanced hammer, no value there. Uh, Malamar going to come down on the Inke, and we're going to use that psychic recharge right away. Pseudo Wudo grabbing a psychic energy, and this is what you're, you're talking about, uh, Jeff, is being able to quickly power up those Pseudo Wudos to use Watch and Learn as a nice, strong counterattack. But what's looking right now is this deck is so teched out with these different one ofs and these different little like little tricks that he has in his list. That right now Trevenant is not running optimally at all. It has not been a silent fear yet, and has had at least been three to four turns. Yeah, and this is the first turn that Mikey has to say, okay, I don't have access to my items. Mikey's still using uh, still using the eggs to propagate. And there it is. He has Guzma and Double Colorless Energy now as well. So he could take out virtually anything he wants on, the, on uh, Bob's side of the board. And I think knowing that Bob didn't do anything at all, I might just go after the Malamar. Malamar is the only thing that truly you know, controls the, the temple of Asuda Wudos. So you got to think, if you go <laughs> after Malamar, uh, that is uh, a guarantee. I'm assuming we're going to see a hard retreat here into the first impression. That's what yeah. I would like to see. Uh, make it just a little bit harder for Bob to just get a two-prize knockout. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see how Mike plays it. You know, this stuff. He just elects to, <laughs> to leave that Zorark up front and uh, saying, okay, you need to psychic recharge, you need to have the rainbow or mm -hmm. however, and you need to retreat into this to be able to take a knockout on yep. one of my Zoroarks. So uh, Mikey really asking all the right questions here, and Bob – Needs to find the answer. Teammates, heck of a start here, bud. That's two cards he's going to get to pluck out. You know what? I think that's a good point there that we didn't realize, that he had teammates in hand here. So good call on Guzmin, the Sudowoodo versus the Malamar. If it would have been a Malamar there, teammates could have easily just grabbed the rainbow and the energy needed. But now we're going to see Floatstone Rainbow probably come down to, to do a watch and learn on this active Zorark. Oh, it looks like he does have the Floatstone. What's that yeah, other well, card right there? Is that a Karen? Floatstone being grabbed by uh, by Bob off the teammates. The other card, uh, a little more difficult to tell. Um, I think I think originally he had Karen in mind, but then switched it for this other card. I'm assuming this additional card is the Rainbow Energy, unless he already drew into it off that previous Juniper. Uh, Bob offering the cut to Mikey. Mike shuffles up a couple. We're going to see Psychic Recharge, Rainbow. So he grabs another Phantom with the team ups. Okay. And he has the rainbow. rainbow. Bink, Psychic Recharge. Let's throw a Psychic on that Pseudo Wudo. It's watched, and it's ready to learn, dole, dole out some of its knowledge. Pseudo Wudo is about to take Mikey Fouché to the classroom <laughs> and teach him a thing or two here. Ride is beating with the, ride, with, with the watch and learn. That is an easy knockout. Again, that weakness allowing Pseudo Wudo to cross the finish line using uh, Ride is beating for uh, the 120, double 240 clean knockout. Now Mikey needs to consider what is my promotion going to be here? And he says it's Tapu Lele, grass energy off the top. So Mikey might be able to pivot around through these Glissopods now. Do the rest structure here. He does have a Zerua and Zork in the discard for sure, as well as some propagation eggs. Don't want to rest structure those back at all. Mr. My oh Bunnel B. Okay. I like this coming back in the deck right now to Bunnel B as well as the two foxes. So Mr. Mime won't stop Silent Fear. However, it will stop Tree Slam, it will stop which is, uh, you know, uh, a quick way that when Trevenant stack, starts stacking up damage, that's how it pivots to take a little bit faster knockouts. So maybe uh, a little insulary action there by putting that back in the deck. Mikey grabs Zoru and wants that back on the bench. Massive hand right now with Mikey right now. Definitely want to probably see a DCE here. DCE here will do 80 to this Pseudo Wudo, not knocking it out right away, but it does leave Watch and Learn very, very fragile with the energy drive right back, um, not doing enough damage at all to really affect this Tapu Lele. And plus, as you mentioned before, AZ to heal that easy damage off. Um, well, Field Blower as well. Tapu Lele picks up the double colorless energy. Field Blower going to take care of that Rescue Scarf and the Float Stone as well. There's going to have to be some uh, additional like knockouts here each turn now for Mike because his deck is looking really thin. He does play N, so you can put cards back into his deck uh, if need be. Uh, but right now his deck is really thin, so he's going to have to escalate these choices here to start taking his KOs. 
And with Suda Wudo only have a 90, 90 HP. HP and the ping off that yep. rainbow energy, energy. That's just an easy, easy knockout exactly. for Mike. Doesn't have to put any of his drawing uh, draw power into the line of fire. Doesn't have to get any chip damage on his uh, mm -hmm. Galissapods. So uh, just a, a well, just kind of planned turn uh, by Mikey there. Rainbow Energy going to come down on the Trevenant break. Dimension Valley pitches uh, pitches the sky field. Mike trimming his bench down to five, and it might be silent fear time. Yeah, we do see the rainbow coming out here with the Deep Valley teammates as well. We're going to probably see a rescue stretcher or some, some uh, form like that to bring back this um, Sudowoodo. But that looks like uh, the Karen right away. Karen's going to bring back both those Sudowoodos as well. Um, to uh, use those uh, watch and learners again later on. So Karen, uh, you know, shuffling, each player shuffles all their Pokemon back into their deck. A uh, lot of t tangential value there too for Mikey, of course, uh, you know, won't be able to propagate eggs and, yep. and you know, trades become a little bit more difficult. Um, however, for Bob, Yes, it returns all his uh, watch and learn pseudo Wudos. Yes, it returns any other Pokemon he may have lost. However, uh, when you're playing Karen, you're not playing draw supporters. Yep. And if he doesn't have the pieces to Karen and apply pressure, then it might just be a bit too slow to catch him back into this game. Uh, Mikey really uh, putting the, the, the foot to the gas here. Yeah, I fully agree with that there as well. And a big thing here, he did grab a Faba too off that teammates as well. Um, so as what's going to probably have to have to happen here in the next turn is that Mike sees this uh, the teammates happen there. He's going to have to escalate the pace here to take out these Trevs. So he may be retreating this Tapu Lele, but if he retreats Tapu Lele, that is one less DC he has. So Bob could be setting up plays to where he can start faba away these other double colors energy and inevitably just silent for his way to game. Something worth noting here, a Psychic Energy off that uh, Psychic Recharge going on the Mr. Mime, which has Cybolt, uh, and with Dimension Value in play, will be able to deal 20 and flip a coin to try and paralyze. Uh, and maybe that's the, the, the follow-up here, is that's how Bob plays Karen, but also applies pressure without yep. locking himself out too violently on his next turn. One thing we're going to see here from Mikey Fouché is that he's eyeing down the baby Zorark from the breakthrough set with that Mind Jack attack. Tend to act the Pokemon at 30 more for every bench Pokemon he has in play. So an easy way to keep that DC on the Tapu Lele, stand in with the with the ability of Zorark, and in this case here, let's use a Guzma instead, and uh, take out Knockout this way. And here we go. Now we see the Malamar being taken down before we can start um, catching things back up with the with the Karen in a second recharge. Uh, it is to note, you know, that Cybolt play I just I had quite simply just mentioned. Um, that stand in Zorark helps uh, yep, leverage diffuse that, out. that a little bit as well. So uh, Mikey covering all the bases, a pretty well-built deck here. Uh, a lot of one-ofs, uh, but all really coming into play in this matchup. It'd be great if he could have hit the Floatstone as well as he, uh, while he could still attach it to this Zorark on the bench before the item lock is taken away here. But it doesn't look like he has that piece just yet. Uh, Skyfield coming down, and I believe he's already done his trades, or he may not. His computer search, if you really wanted that floatstone. Yeah, that Skyfield coming down is a big deal because no more Dimension Valleys on Bob's side of the board. And that Trevenant Break coming back up. However, it's going to need to pick up another energy to start attacking in some meaningful way. Computer search throwing away Juniper and Faba. Got to give Bob credit. Good looking deck over there on yep. the left side of the field here. A lot of bling, a lot of good looking cards. Kind of jealous. <laughs> you know, um, might want to trade that deck in and put down a, a you know a solid down payment on a house or something. Yep. But uh, that, that's completely up to him. Full art and on cue, coming down, shuffle up. Mikey gets two, Bob gets four, and the action continues here yep. in round four. We definitely need to see another energy here from Bob. A lot of energy has been cycled through now, especially since the Malamars are gone as well. The strategy is to get those in the bin, but if they're in the bin and there's no Malamar, those energies are gone for good. So hopefully here on this end of four. We can see either a psychic or a rainbow energy to continue this uh, silent fear onslaught. Mikey, not a care in the world. He's only put down one DCE there uh, it is. and, and, and wow. used, used his other grass energy there. And just a silent fear attachment. My, Mike's got to be feeling oh pretty good. Oh my gosh, he's a sycamore. Yeah, Sycamore a, and a verse seeker. seeker, but obviously uh, Mike is going to have to take a look at how many cards he actually has left. Might be worth trading some of that away and seeing if you can uh, work into your deck in that fashion. Yeah, and, and to another thing too, I would almost play a, since if you're going to Sycamore, I would almost play the verse seeker for a Colrus too. And, you know, yes, it's more cards, but you can serve that Sycamore for a guaranteed card litter. 
Ah, but with Trevin and active though, with the uh, with, in the item lock there, he opts to do the Sycamore. Not a lot of cards left in the deck for Mikey. However, he does have trades available. Um, you can't imagine that he's missing too many pieces after that Sycamore. The deck's so small, he's thinned a, a lot of the uh, superfluous stuff out. Mm -hmm. But now it should just be all gas all the time. All right here, see some Zorua, Zorua. a couple Shamans. Yep. It's got to feel pretty nice when you're playing uh, playing Shaman X and you uh, set up for one. DC wow. too too busy. Let's get busy. He could actually use the GX attack right now for a clean knockout right on his Trevenant. Uh, the cross cut GX for 150 and take the knockout on his Trevenant. Already has the rainbow damage and actually move it to the bench to where he could promote. You know, maybe it's go a uh, Wimpod and act a spot or something else that's easy to take the KO from. The only thing Bob really has uh, in a retaliatory function is the Cybolt Mr. Mime, and the Dimension Valley isn't even in play anymore. And as we know, he's out. So there we go. He is actually going to opt to use Mind Jack instead. I like this play. Conserve your conserve your GX attack for that guaranteed knockout later on. Um, Look at, break. look at that stack of cards going away, felled by the the uh, Mind Jack Zorark. Trevin is going to go back to hand because of Rescue Scarf here, so you can't evolve it right away again. Um, but I think at this point, uh, yep, I'm about to say, it's probably just scoop this game, get set up for game two, and start faster. I mean, unfortunately there, he had a really, uh, you know, to your word, anemic start. Uh, you know, didn't have any energy, only had the one Phantom. Uh, was able to get the Inke alive, but, you know, not not enough going on to keep the keep the train flowing there. Got one watch learn attack off there, but after that point, only the one Trevenant to really kind of stand battle. Yeah, as you mentioned, five turns, uh, four or five turns went by. No Force Curse. Uh, mm -hmm. And you really just can't let Zorark decks go that unimpeded. Mm -hmm. You either have to be taking knockouts or stressing their resources in some fashion. And um, unfortunately, Bob, as you mentioned, lots of tech cards. Yep. Um, kind of got the weird mixture of them, the weird yep. melting pot of them, and wasn't able to establish any portion of his game plan. And it all just kind of fell apart and wasn't able to catch back up when he finally did get the Malamar going and the pseudo Wudos yep. ready to go. Uh, Mike's hand was 15 cards, and he was able to just yep. easily pivot around it. So um, I definitely want to see Bob establish a more traditional Trevenant start uh, mm -hmm. in this second game. Get that set up. Mm -hmm. Hope, hope Mikey misses a little bit, and then start kitting up your pseudo Wudos, your psychic recharge Malamar, and be able to immediately punish when it's time to switch gears into that. 100% agree there. Establish the, the trees first, and then, you know, back up to your other tree, pseudo Wudo there, to really uh, get your game state going there. Uh, one thing to note here, with all these different one-ups, too, that he has, these different tech cards, all of them do combat the Zork matchup fairly well between the pseudo Wudos, the Faba, the Karen, as you mentioned, getting, bringing back the Propagation Eggs. It's just that there are so many moves and parts there they kind of came at the wrong time i think that's really when most started he started with sudowudo benched another one you know had the end didn't get much off of that there so i think as long as we do this traditional setup here we should be good to go here for a game two absolutely the players have selected starters and we are going right back down to the action um obviously bob will be on the button he'll be uh leading the action here with his trevenant sudowudo inke malamar uh, amalgamation deck, and mm -hmm. we'll see if uh, he, we, he can get off to a little bit less rocky start. Not that his start was actually that rocky. I say that. No, it, wasn't. it wasn't bad. It was just not traditional Trevenant, and it was caught in the middle of two strategies. I, think, I don't think it was optimal for what was happening on Mike's side of the board right there. You know, and, But going to it here, he does have the Phantom start this time. Let's see how he pivots off of this. Mikey taking a look at that full art carry and says, how much are all these cards, bud? I'm a teacher, and I could, uh, I could use some of this extra cash if you don't let me sell, sell some of your cards for you. Mike's fine. It's almost the summer. He's not going to have to work for a while. Still get the check. He's chilling over there. But, you know, after look at all this uh, money going to the bin right now, he does Ultra Ball 4. Looks like, what was that? The Lele for the Bridget. Bridget. And now we're going to get some of these Phantoms out and probably a Sudowoodo and a Ditto. Uh, while Bob pulls those three Or Inke, Pokemon, sorry. Yep. Uh, get Phantom, Ditto. Uh, in case pulled to the front. Fun fact, Mikey, while uh, Bob is selecting his three Pokemon, South Massachusetts Cannonball Champion. Cannonball. Cannonball Champion. Biggest splash. Despite his stature, really knows how, uh, how to lay in a good cannonball, from what I've been told. Interesting. Yeah. Inke, ditto, <laughs> Phantom, selected. You know, I try, I try to put in some fun facts out there, and, uh, you know, I... Sometimes they fall flat, but I think that's an interesting fact about Mikey. Well, fall flat and make a big splash. You guarantee that there, 
Ditto as well, uh, and Sudo coming down. Cool thing about here is this getting Ditto and the Inke. If the Inke is taken out, Ditto, Prism Star, can Sudo be an Inke and still evolve into Malamar the following turn? What is cool about Rescue Starch on Ditto, uh, Rescue Scarf on Ditto Prism, if it gets knocked out, the Ditto comes back to your hand. It doesn't get uh, doesn't get sent to the Lost Zone. So a little fun interaction there worth considering, uh, and I wouldn't be shocked if uh, that's where that Rescue Scarf goes. 100% agree there. And right, we've seen a, a mirror play on Mike's side, but instead of Ultra Ball, it's going to be Pokey Calm. Lele going to get this Bridget here after Mike does his inventory check. Uh, not too bad starting a Shaman, uh, Shaman in the active here uh, for the Zorark decks, uh, simply because you have access to DCE and mm -hmm. you can always Sky Return. Uh, it's an easy way to get it off the field and be able to reuse it a little bit later if necessary. Sky Return and bring it back and do it again and then again and then again if you want to. Zorua, Zorua, Ditto, Mikey leaning towards giving himself the option on that third Pokemon if it needs to be another Zorark uh, or if he wants it to become a Glissapod. I love the Ditto card like just in just general. such a flex card. It just you know can fit into any stage one card strategy, especially if you want to do those one-off techs. We see a lot of people in the standard format do one Ditto, one Alola Muck, just to kind of get that chance to delay it there. Um, but definitely a lot of flexibility with the Ditto Prisms card. And going second, Shaman in the active, even less of a punishment. Uh, Sky returned 30 damage on the Phantom, and Zorua is now in the active. A pass from Mikey, and he's got his draw supporter for the next turn. Juniper getting rid of Faba. Uh, Faba uh, can't identify that psychic Phantom Pokemon, but and um, Trevor break. break. He had no bench room for the other Phantoms. So you know what? Let's just get rid of him. We got the guys we want out here. Malamar uh, is in hand. Rainbow Energy. But do we have a Trevenant? There is one Trevenant in uh, in hand right now. I'm trying to think. He's going to evolve his active one. He has to. He has to slow down Frank, uh, Mike. Mike didn't do too much on his turn outside of just the Bridget, which leads you to say there's probably a draw supporter in his hand. I believe he had a Colrus. But I think the Trevenant's going to come here too to active. Oh, he's opting to save it and let Mike get a turn of items. Well, because of Dimension Ascension. Valley, you can use the Ascension attack for free, get another Trevenant set up, and, uh, you know, have at least another one to, to kind yep. of pivot into if necessary, depending on how Mikey attacks. Because that Rainbow Energy did come down on Pseudo Udo Watch and Learn, he is ready to, yep. to use that attack uh, to great effect, obviously, if Mikey allows him to do so. Ascension going to, which causes a colorless energy there, D Valley reducing colorless for second type Pokemon by one. Free attack, kind of like an Alola Pokemon we see now from the Sun of, Sun of Musa. Got that free attack. Did he Ascension and fail it? I think he did. Oof. That would that, mean that three, tre oh, no, three Trevenants would be prized if he failed that Ascension because the Sycamore earlier, Juniper earlier, was just a Trevenant break, not the normal Trevenant. Um, that's that's some John Cutler level, you know, regional finals, three rallies type thing right there. It's at least two. We know for sure it's at least two. I can't recall if maybe one got discarded, maybe turn one. Mm -hmm. um, that that knowledge is escaping me a little bit. Um, Ultra Ball pitching a versus seeker. Just grab a Zorark GX. Let's start this train now. Yeah, here it comes. The ride is beating train here. Going to be able to hit as of right now uh, one. Uh, Skyfield bumps the D Valley, but and this is going to be a nice chorus for eight, despite Mikey not having a full bench. You know, st still going to be able to shuffle in the other chorus he had, draw eight. So one thing to inter the interesting to note there on Bob's turn, he did not evolve the Malamar, and that's because there's no energy to really start pivoting his strategy onto his pseudo widows and such. So if you were to evolve that Malamar, no no second recharge, and Mikey just goosems up the next turn, he loses full value of that Malamar, holds it down. To see if he wants to take out either Ditto or NK and then involve the other. That's a very solid point, Jeff. Uh, Bob, you know, although a little bit unfortunate on that Ascension, not being able to evolve into uh, a Trevenant, uh, certainly not letting that jar him. Still going to make good decisions like he did prior prior points in that turn. And he's going to keep trying to get himself into a position to take a W here in Game 2. Mikey, with his first trade, picks up a Field Blower and an Ultra Ball. And the game continues on. We do see the Ultra Ball here, and he probably might, he may go after the, the, uh, the Zorark here, or he can actually ram for KO as well with Zorua if he'd opted to. Ultra Ball throwing away. I believe that's Oracorio. I do like holding on to the Field Blower. Mikey disagrees. Um, a lot of value you can get in these types of decks with mm -hmm. the Field Blower because of the Rescue Scarf. Yep. 
Um, so taking away that option is always seems uh, pretty nice. Uh, Zorark GX number two coming down. Uh, as we mentioned, that ditto can be used into whatever Mikey needs in the moment. Uh, he, he senses just a bit of weakness on Bob's side of the board. So what does he do? He grabs his Zorark GX and he says, I just want to see as many cards as possible and keep putting on this pressure and hope Bob just really can't turn the corner on me. I wonder, I'm, I'm assuming that at this point, because he's involving the bench Pokemon versus the active, that he is opting to do this ram play here um, instead of a normal ride is beating. You gotta love it. Uh, Pseudo Wudo stepping up and you know hitting a ram for twenty uh, actually doesn't take a knockout yep. there. Um, so Mikey playing this. That's uh, that's a very good point. I didn't even think about that either. Watch and learn. Not being able to take a KO because of ram. That rescue surf coming in. Um, I was going to say, I think Mikey had another field blower. He only plays one. Um, it was, he was looking through his discard. Trevenant stepping up, Rescue Scarf, and an N. Uh, going to rinse Mike's hand back into his deck, and Bob is hoping that these six are very good. Definitely want to see uh, um, some different energy, D Valley, a lot of different pieces he's going to need here to keep going forward here. That's you know that's kind of part of the 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 gimmick with these watch and learn or like STL Simultrati La Casse's uh, counter box. You need your opponent to play ball with you to mm -hmm. be able to use those effects. And Mikey is just like, okay, I know watch and learn sitting there. How do I play around this? Ram, ram for knockout. Yep. And I don't think there's a lot going on in uh, Bob's hand off of that end of six here. I see double rescue scarf there, a life center. There's another phantom. There is an energy, but. This is going to go down to the pseudo Wudo, and uh, yeah. Phantom, Bench Barrier, Mr. Mime. I don't think there's any second energy in the way. discard pile for him to second recharge either. <laughs> Mikey just like, it's like, okay, like I was able to sky return and ram for a knockout. I've taken a prize. Am I, re am I getting punished that badly uh, if I go to Zorark GX? Mikey doesn't really like his hand. However, a Colrus for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and... 8, 9, 10, 11, keep me honest. Quick maths. 11 cards. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look here at Mikey's list. Uh, no Enhanced Hammer, which would have been nice to be able to maybe uh, knock out uh, a Pseudo Wudo mm -hmm. and remove the rainbow energy from the other yep. and uh, kind of give yourself a reprieve from that watch and learn. doesn't seem like that's going to be uh, an opportunity for Mikey, but he is going to be drawing 2, 6, 9, 11. Nailed yep. it. So good, Kirk. So good. Mikey heard me. He says, Kirk, I agree with your counting. Let's let's run it. <laughs> Bunnel B going to move to the front as well as Lele. Let's do a little Pokemon count here. There's the egg he could trade away. Give me two. Galissapod, uh, egg number two, trade number two. Galissapod, evolve. Uh, does he have the grass energy? Then you could step up in first impression. You know, you could hard retreat, step up, first impression, evolve. Mikey, with just l quite literally the world in his hands, got all the options available to him. He is. I think you know, the big thing here is, you know, he's obviously holding back the Zorg right now to avoid that watch and learn comeback attack right now. Um, if there's a way he could take a knockout without um, using right as beating here. I think uh, Mikey's playing to trade into the grass energy to be able to hard yep, retreat in yep. first impression. Um, Let's see if he gets there. He has two energies. Already a lot of cards in hand. Here it goes. Ultra, Ultra Ball. Ball. No, not the grass. Ultra Ball and AZ. AZ has already played a supporter for turn. Wimpod and just a knockout. I think you got you got to take it here. Um, okay, so that leads me to believe that there's a float stone. Um, but is the psychic energy or another energy psychic. hiding out? I do not think there's any psychic energy in the discard pile right now at all. So it's probably going to goose with something heavy here, possibly the, the Golisopod, and then just you know, have uh, those Trevenant active until he can get his strategy going. Um, Rescue Scarf coming down on the uh, Trevenant that was evolved from the Ditto Prism, so he will be able to pick that up. Um, but this is going to be easy to solve as soon as he moves it to the front there. This is easy to solve as an AZ. Yeah, I mean, Mikey has the AZ in hand. If he has another Glissopod, he can evolve the Wimpod on the bench, AZ the active, and, and go for Grass Energy. But it starts with Trades. This is how we begin this turn, and that's how it will stay. Another trade, and he's got another one. Going to trade Battle Compressor. Uh, double, double DCE. DCE. However, AZ, knockout, still there, still open. And it is gonna be, it's going to be AZ, bring up the Sarua. Zork, sorry. Here 
And it's Riot is beating for the KO. I do like getting the other Wimpod down um, just in case Bob decides to target one mm -hmm. for some reason or another. You keep that uh, option open. He's he. Bob is Bob needs the answer right now. He has like stuff set up for. He's just not hitting the energy pieces that he needs. No draw support. The Ditto's coming back to hand right now, but oh man, this is. This is I, I think it really just comes down to how teched out this list is, to be honest. Yep, Floatstone going to Malamar, Rescue Scarf going to Trevenant, uh, hard retreat into Trevenant. Gonna keep the item lock going. Uh, Lysander the Wimpod. And says, all right, Mikey, like, w what do you do now? Mm -hmm. It's going to be an easy pass here. He plays a D-Valley. He's going to bump some Pokemon off. Get the, sh get the uh, Tapulele off board. Mikey having a tough decision here. Opts to get rid of the other Wimpod. There's the pass. <laughs> Muck right off the top there. Uh, traded away uh, for 1-2. Grass Energy finally deciding to show up, but... Um, Kind of in a weird spot. It doesn't have as much value now as it did in any of the previous two turns. Oh, my goodness. This is mine, Jackson. I'd be able to slide right in here, take out that. Just, just inevitably just like to stop Trevenant's strategy completely from like stalling him out. Mine, Jack. Going to stand in, take the KO here on Trevenant, put Mike down to just two prizes left. Two prizes left, two cards, or three cards, excuse me, left in deck. And Bob putting that Malamar up yet again and off the top, but is it too late? And off the top here, he's going to have to hit a Trevenant off this end as well. Oh, no, sorry, Rescue Scarf brought it back. But end of two, item lock. He needs the energy here. Like, watch and learn Pseudo Udo doesn't even really help you. No, okay, maybe, okay, you're gonna get, you're gonna knock out the mind jack Zork. Yeah, but then, yeah, but Zork breaks the Zork GX just takes the KO right back. Exactly. At this point in the game, it's just KO for KO. Mikey's our Mikey's double the prize ahead of what Bob can take on his side of board. Plus, if he takes a KO on his mind jack Zork, he still has to take three additional prizes, or three additional knockouts, I should say. You know, uh, because of the weakness, kind of a tough matchup for Bob. But he clearly knew Zorark GX was gonna be a concern this weekend built his deck to take advantage of that uh, similar to Katron in round one clearly mm -hmm. a deck that looks on paper like it can feast on these Zorark decks but Zorark GX is just such a powerful card those strategies didn't even come together against it being able to draw through your deck at, at will is just is a super powerful effect right now and I think they're both kind of the each uh, each different side of the spectrum you know Mike Doucet with the consistency of Zorark GX versus Bob and these different outs who try to counteract that and you see the leverage there. You see that obviously is heavily favored on Mike's side versus Bob, who is struggling to get set up currently. And we're we're hot. We're this 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 match itself has at least been 10, 12 minutes. Yep. Computer search, pitching teammates, and the first psychic energy finally going to the discard. Um, Bob grabbing whatever card he wants doesn't necessarily matter at this point. It's got to be a good one. And I don't know. Maybe an, uh, there might be like a, a Nito uh, counter catcher play involved. That could be pulled off and, and spam Silent Fear and get a bunch of things going that way. Um, actually, uh, Psychic Recharge, Counter Catcher, mm -hmm. Zorark GX, um, and Watch and Learn, the the Mind Jack. That's a knockout. And I, but I think this is I think this is uh, it's still it. Unless Mikey just did not draw anything at all, but he's supposed to exit the Zorark. Mind Jacks will take a knockout here. Uh, and then all he needs is just a DC for game to follow. And there's a computer, computer search, search which you can go ahead and grab it. Right, well, we'll probably trade first, um, just to get everything he needs there. Floatstone in hand too. Like that was just a great, uh, a great end to two for Mikey. Just kind of got it all. Prop eggs with the computer search. Obviously, uh, watch and learn pseudo udo doesn't didn't watch and learn any abilities. Yep. Uh, there's no force curse going on, so Mikey free to use any items he chooses. And that computer search is going to go ahead and grab a Professor Sycamore straight away. Yeah, I see both sides of this here. I, I see what Mike is doing here. He's going to go ahead and just dump his hand, draw a bunch of cards, and then draw even more cards with Zorark. Um, he already has a KO with the Mind Jack. I almost would have just computer searched, or, or sorry, just traded first, and then see what you got off the trades, and then decide which computer search should be since it's a free computer search anyway. And that way you're already, you know, in a spot to decide what you want to do the following turn. But um, this dins more cards, um, which narrows him down if he were to get end yet again here. And he's definitely going to play his Valor Compressor. He, yeah. he wants to make himself end proof. 
Mike just really wants to get rid of all this chaff that's kind of left in the deck. Cards that he no longer needs. You know, you see him pull to the front a choice band, uh, Tapu Lele, uh, and an Ultra Ball. Like, things he's just not, doesn't mm -hmm. want to see if he get ends again. He just wants to get to the nuts and bolts of his deck. Some energies, uh, some supporters, and that's it. I think it's interesting that he compressed it away to Shaman, too. I almost would have compressed it away, like, some another piece. Because if you do get end of two and then you draw to Shaman, you can still draw more cards. Mikey taking a look. He does have Super Rod. Going to make sure that he doesn't uh, actually need anything from his discard. Uh, because when you're thinning stuff out, it's kind of counterintuitive to yep. thin a bunch of stuff out and then throw some more junk back in. Galissapod coming down on the Wimpod. That's carrying the Floatstone. Double colorless on uh, Tapu Lele. And you're kind of seeing the detriment of yep. this Rainbow Energy. That's just another easy knockout with a Pokemon that Mike doesn't mind uh, losing because his his beef attackers are all still sitting in the back row ready to go. Uh, this is... Wow. Bob, um, Bob Zhang just checking to see if there's five copies of a card so we can get Mikey on a, on a legal <laughs> try to, deck presented. Trying to find something here to, to leverage this, uh, this game two right now because um, Mike Fouché, um, I think he's going to win this game. He's, uh, he's miles ahead right now. Um, I, I don't see an Azul GG uh, Towering <laughs> Splash GX to take, uh, to take four prizes here. Um, it's just a, yeah, it's it's an unfortunate. It's an unfortunate for Bob because he he came very prepared for uh, this type of matchup, and is just having issues. He needs an enhanced hammer to even get rid of the the mind check, the, the the energy on the bench to Zork right now. Because even if he brings up this Trevenant, he's gonna he's gonna psychic recharge, load up the Trevenant. He's gonna have a big draw here with N, um, and hoping he has an enhanced hammer as well, which I think he might have got rid of earlier in the game. He has a lot of pieces here, D Valley. Um, D Valley or um, Energy, so he can second recharge plus attach to Trevenant. Enhanced Hammer to Zorark so on Ben so that he does, can't just mind jack knock out the next turn. A um, lot of pieces here off an of end of four. Yeah, end of four. And hope Mike doesn't hit another Energy within between the end of one and the trades that are going to inevitably happen. Yeah, and uh, has access to two trades. Mike just picking one card. There's a Psychic and a Shaman. Okay, so Psychic. So step one. Set up for four. One, two, three, and four. That is no Psychic hammer. Juniper. Juniper Blower, I believe is what that last game. card was. And Bob is just going to extend the hand. Mikey Fouché, Southern, Southern Massachusetts local uh, pool cannonball champion, takes down round, <laughs> well, round, uh, was that round four here in Hartford uh, against the Tech Dow Trevenant deck. You know, makes a big dive in a cannonball championship, makes a big dive here in round four, taking out Trevenant uh, very handily. Unfortunately for Bob, he had some suboptimal draws. Um, the strategy was there, but was not able to, take, uh, to optimize it there and take advantage of the Zork matchup that they had. Mikey, however, loves seeing that dark weakness, took full advantage of it. Yeah, Mike playing really good. You know, you see, uh, you know, even though you're advantaged on, we'll say, the, the weakness of the other Pokemon, mm -hmm. uh, he was playing very clean. Uh, Sky Return to get yep. the Shaman off the board. Noticing that Ram is a, is a path to a yep. knockout to Phantom, especially once the Ascension went yep. in and, and, and in Bob whiff. was like, well, just pass. So, you know, Mikey had to be salivating a little bit. Okay, I can Ram for the knockout, not get knocked mm -hmm. out back with a watch and learn, preserve some prizes. Uh, just uh, a very well scouted and played game by Mikey. And uh, we're going to go grab him for an interview. So we will be right back with round four winner, Mikey Fouché.
Welcome back, Pokemon fans. Kirk Dube, Snacks Dube, round four winner. Mikey Fouché, how are you feeling right now? 4-0? Feeling pretty good. Pretty happy to be doing so well. I haven't played in a while, so this is a pretty nice surprise. Well, you're definitely a skilled player of uh, X-Files lineage. Yep, uh, Got to get true. that out there. Reffing six prizes very yep. well. Jerseys look sharp. Um, walk us through that matchup a little bit. Uh, his deck was completely teched out for Zorark-type shenanigans, and it just didn't matter. Yeah, so Bob and I are really good friends, and so we we talked like before the event and kind of going the last couple of rounds. So I knew he was playing Trevenant, but then he opened the pseudo Wudo, and I was like, Okay, what's going on? And then he bunched the second Sudo Udo, and I was super surprised. And then he played the, the Inke down, and I really didn't know what was going on. Um, so I, I figured I kind of had to like try and kill the Sudo Udos, kill the, kill the Malamars, because the Trevs are easy to knock out. No, absolutely. Um, do you think in that first game, only having one Phantom and never really limiting you on your items as Trevenant decks normally do, do you think that gave you the opportunity to put that game plan together? Yes and no. Um, I had Guzma pretty early with a bunch of Seekers, and I was able to kind of set up even before the first Trevenant came out. So I don't know how much it really would have affected uh, the game. He kind of, we were, we were kind of on par with each other for a couple turns, but then he hit like one turn where he missed a supporter. And that's kind of what Trevenant does, and especially a Trevenant list like that that's uh, you know, a little clunkier because it's got other stuff. Um, so just that one turn just allowed me to set up so much more. Um, yeah. I want to talk about the first two turns of game two, uh, Sky Return and two Ram uh, for the knockout. Uh, when, when did that, the lightning strike, that kind of that was going to be your course of action without kind of unlocking the watch and learn pseudo Udo? Well, so like uh, uh, when I started Shaman, I knew that I was going to Sky Return. And so doing 30, whatever, I didn't think that was going to be relevant. But then he evolved his bench Trevenant and then he used Ascension and he didn't get a Trevenant. So he actually ended up prizing his remaining three Trevenants. Um, we saw them come out later in the game because he drew two of them off his prizes. But uh, yeah, so, so as soon as he didn't get the Trevenant, I was like, oh, I don't need to attack with anything except Ram, and I take the take the knockout. And so like, I, I don't know if you saw, but I had the opportunity to evolve to Jorak GX, and I had the opportunity to evolve to even to the Mind Jack, mm -hmm. and I just opted not to because, uh, yeah, to avoid the Watch and Learn Pseudo Widow, exactly like you said. Absolutely. 4-0, um, oh, great start. You haven't played in a while, so this has got to be a, a good uh, re-entry into uh, yeah. the, the big tournament scene. Uh, what would you like to see for the rest of the day to kind of keep your uh, tournament going in the right direction? Uh, other Zorak decks are usually pretty good to play against. Uh, any Archie's Blastoise would be great since I have the Glissopod. Um, Seismato would be good because I have the Glissopod. Uh, Pikaram is kind of the only matchup I'm not really would be too psyched to play against. Um, it's like 50-50, I think. But uh, actually, that's why we played the Ramsaru is, is so we could hit the Pikaram and then later on uh, be able to like two-shot it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, at least that's forward thinking. Yeah. Uh, last question for you, Mikey. How did you land on Zorark Elisipod? Kind of a throwback from last season. Yeah, sure. Um, so the last one I played in was Dallas Regionals. And I haven't played a single game of Pokemon um, since since then. But so this week leading up to it, I, I messaged Dean Nizam, who won Dallas with Zoropod because I felt like the deck would be pretty well positioned. So we kind of talked back and forth, and we landed on uh, the same 60. Uh, we changed a couple things from his uh, Daytona list. We played... Uh, two stand-ins orcs to kind of deal with shot clock and give us an extra non uh, one prize attacker uh, and yeah so I just thought it was a pretty good meta call for, for the day well it's certainly seeming to pay dividends at 4-0 and oh. if you don't mind sitting tight I'm going to go through a little bit of housekeeping stuff we got to do before we, uh, sure. we, we we pitch it off here so we are going to lunch break here after round 4 in Hartford Connecticut um, just want to lay a quick shout out into TC Evolutions the dice and GX markers um, I'm sure you've seen them I've used them before they are providing lunch here for the casting crew so we want to uh, give a big shout out to them and give them their due props um, follow up uh, full grip games we have more of those deck tech videos with Andrew Mahone so feel free to tune into those because shortly after that we're going to be doing a caster Q&A, so fire up those brain synapses and send those uh, th send those questions over because we'll be handling those as well. Uh, Kirk Dubes, next to Bay, round four winner. Mikey Fouché, thanks and congratulations. Thanks, we will be right back here in Hartford.